let's finish it. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of The Closing Pitch. My name is David Berkby, and this is a show about people, culture, and how to create a winning lifestyle. I hope you guys have been good. I'm sorry that I have not been on a podcast in what seems like forever. Uh, no excuses. Play like a champion. Uh, been a little busy. Uh, we kind of finishing up our seasons here with the Rawlings Tigers. Uh, then, you know, no rest for the wicked. So there's a uh, there's literally a flip of the seasons immediately. Like you end on Sunday, you start tryouts on Monday, you form your teams, you get going, and it's all it's all excuses. Can't say it isn't, but uh, that's kind of the reason we've been stepping away from the podcast for a second. Not because we don't love doing it, not because we don't love sharing information, but honestly, just because it got a little busy. But with that being said, I know Spiker just came out with a solo episode of his own, uh, and it was it was awesome. A lot of great information, but we uh, we're looking forward to bringing some more info to you and have a lot of great topics. Uh, kind of in the hopper that we will be sending out uh, here over the next couple months, and we'll we'll continue to try to bring some great information to our parents, our players, and people even outside of the organization, whoever is wanting to listen to our words. So um, that's kind of what I'm here for today. So I want to get back in the saddle, and I wanted to talk about um, three topics, all very similar, that I talk about on a regular basis with our players, with our coaches. And honestly, these three topics are, are things that on a daily basis I go through. Um, definitely topics, definitely perspective changes that I needed as a player. And I'll kind of explain that path as well and kind of how I failed at it, how I got better at it. But um, these, are, these are topics that I think fit great for the closing pitch because – it's going to talk about the player's perspective. It's going to talk about a coaching perspective. It's going to talk about a lifestyle. Okay. It's even applicable towards business business because I'm doing it on a daily basis. Number one, something that I always talk about with players is the understanding of what the learning curve is. We hear it all the time and, and every player understands this concept. Okay. In order to get better, I have to learn. When I learn, I learn something new. And then basically it kind of just goes in a circle. I learn something, I get better. I learn something, I get better. I learn something, I get better. And they forget about the very, very important part of that process that nobody likes. And that's failure. Everybody thinks that if you're, if you're watching on YouTube, your success line as a player, as a business leader, or just in life is generally just going to go like that, right? It's kind of a steady movement pattern up and you just keep, you know, leveling up winning, right? Well, I don't believe it looks like that. And I think I've mentioned this on on prior podcasts, but the learning curve kind of looks like this. And I give this example to my players all the time. Let's say on whatever skill rate level you are, here's where you're at. Well, whenever I teach you something new or introduce something that is uh, you've never heard before into your game, well, immediately, you're not going to just go up. You're not going to just be like, oh, that makes sense. Boom, I just did it. Boom, my velo jumps. Oh, hey, my I, my batting average just went up 30 points because it's one thing that I learned in the last 20 seconds. It doesn't work like that. What generally is going to happen is you're going to be here. I'm going to teach you something new or introduce it to you, and then you're generally going to go a little bit down. And then as if you keep working at it, you'll probably level out, and then eventually – you'll get above where you were prior. And that's kind of what the true learning curve looks like. It's this little wave that goes down, that goes up, that goes down, that goes up. But if you kind of put a line through the middle, now you got that steady line of, of achievement, of growth. But where players totally go wrong, where coaches go wrong, and this will lead into my other topics as well, is that they don't like that failure aspect. They, everybody in this world is a results-oriented culture. That's all we're worried about is results now. Give it to me now. Well, whenever I teach you something new, it is so unrealistic to expect that you're going to be good at it. You're going to fail. You're going to suck for a little bit. There's, there's no way because it takes time to learn it. And then even when you start to grasp and learn it, it still takes you way more time to get really good at it. 
So at that point, I say, listen, I have a little caveat. Once I, once I tell you the why and once I tell you what we're doing and why we're introducing this new movement pattern, mechanic, thought, um, approach, whatever it is, we're taking results out of the equation. We're not worrying about them, okay? I'll tell you down the road, 100 reps down the road, 1,000 reps down the road of working at this topic, then we will introduce results again to you. At that point will be when I go, hey, let's see, is that, are you locating your fastball better now because of this? Are you making more consistent contact uh, because of this or, or whatever it might be? Then we'll start to look at results. And at that point, that's when we're going to figure out, should we keep down this path or should we pivot? Is it working? Is it, is it not? But players have to understand that's a part of the process. The failure aspect is there and it has to be there. And that's the only way you truly know you're doing something different. If you're not failing at it, you probably haven't made the adjustment. You're probably not changing anything. And then you're just doing this, boom, back to normal. You're just staying level, okay? And you're not growing. So you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable through those moments and you have to be okay with failure, which leads to number two. Short-term, all-in success versus long-term, steady success. Here's what I mean by it. And th this leads totally into number three, so I'm kind of putting two and three together. I think we've all at some point either been or played with or worked with somebody who has been that short-term, all-in, roller coaster of emotions person to where they have a little bit of success or for this example because we're this is you know we work in baseball this player has a great weekend he or she goes you know nine for 13 two doubles three triples couple home runs team mvp on the weekend and they are at the high of highs right now they are thinking they're unstoppable that they love the game they know that success is just going to continuously come their way. And, man, it couldn't be, it couldn't be a better time and it couldn't be an easier time. Well, then what happens? What happens next week? Maybe they have the same success. It's great. More than likely, they don't. Then all of a sudden, you go for three with three strikeouts. Or the idea that worked really, really well for you in business and totally helped out your business, you came up with this other idea and it failed, it flopped, it didn't work. Where are you at now? You went from up here, down here. And at this point, most people just don't understand where to go. My example for me was that I was a roller coaster of emotions player. I was a roller coaster of emotions business uh, person, okay? I still have to stay out of that trap because my I, I, that's just my personality. I love to get real excited and I love to get real mad. And it really didn't help me too much on the field and it really hasn't helped me too much when it happens in my uh, after baseball life, you know, help, helping run and operate a business. Because once I, I was never worried about the high highs, even though that's a trap too, because you think everything's easy. You stop kind of grinding. You stop putting in the effort. You think that you've just figured it out. But that one you kind of get mellowed out of pretty easily. The one that always got me was when I would go down to the low lows because I would generally stay there for a while. I, uh, I would get real sour on the game. I'd get real sour and look for every excuse and just get mad at why is this happening to me? Why is this not happening to them? And, you know, what was me mentality and just totally just sit there for a while. And then, man, that would snowball into my game. I'd, I'd go through weeks of just being really, really bad. And then what thoughts come into your mind? You know, do I, do I really want to do this? Like, do I even like this game? Do I even like this business? Is this for me? What new job is out there? What, what where can I go now? Like what, what just screw this, get out of this and let's go somewhere else. And then that's a trap in and of itself because you'll find yourself continuously doing that. 
well, baseball's not for me. Maybe it's maybe it's soccer. Well, same thing happens. I hate soccer. Now, well, I'm going to go play baseball or basketball. Sorry. Well, what happens? Or nowadays, it's like I go off to school number A, university number A, and hey, it's great. I love it. It's great. Oh, adversity hits. Boom. I'm out. See ya. I'm going to go to this one. Now you're at five, six schools throughout your career. It's a route to take. Not saying it's the right one, not saying it's the wrong one, but it happens, right? And you just continuously quit and start and quit and start. And it's definitely not a long-term kind of stable success type route to go. And I figured that out for myself. And I always kind of got to mentally remind myself that when those roller coaster thoughts start to come in to my head, I have to stop it right away. I have to stop it. I have to try to take it from here to here, and I got to start trying to take it from here to there, okay? There's nothing wrong with getting excited. You have a little success. You do something right. There's nothing wrong at all within the moment of celebrating those successes. In, in, in fact, I think it's very, very important. And then there's also nothing wrong with having a little failure. Most look at failure, adversity as, as issues, as things that we don't want well, I got news for you. It's the only things that are going to make you better. It's the only ones. Nothing else will ever do that for you. No one always wins. You have to lose. You have to learn. You have to get better. You have to fail. You have to work at it. You have to get better. Most times than not, being the person, well, again, whether you're a player, whether you're a coach, whether you're in business, being the person that has that long-term Steady success, long-term growth, process, stable type energy person, those are the people that when you look up in four, five, ten years down the road are way ahead of the game or way ahead of probably where you are being the roller coaster person. You might look great in the short term, and trust me, those roller coaster people, guys, they are going to tell you how great things are, and they're going to tell you how crappy things are real quick. But the guy, the, the, the girl that literally just keeps grinding, just keeps working, understands that there's a little bit of both into this process that we talk about and that I'm going to have to learn a whole lot of things. And as I'm learning them, I'm going to fail and I'm going to have situations that are going to be great. And I'm going to have situations that are going to teach me something and they're just going to keep coming. You don't really notice those people until it's too late. Until all of a sudden, you know, you entered high school with Johnny and you and Johnny were the same. You were the same type of player. You were good. And then all of a sudden Johnny is graduating high school and going on to school number A and you're not playing the game anymore. And you're like, he's, how did he get way better than me? How's he getting these opportunities? And I didn't. I bet if you look back, a lot of it can be attributed to the mindset type of, of processes we're talking about today. The learning curve, how we adjust to it, how we react to it, the short term versus the long term, the roller coaster guy versus the stable guy. It's all there. And that's why I tell players and that's why I tell coaches and that and it's all it's all out of the book that I've learned. Cause when I tell you this guys, it's so true. This was the downfall for me, no doubt about it for most of my career because that's I lived on emotion and if I were to continue to do it here with with the business I, I I'd fail there too I guarantee it I'd be out of it I'd go do something different because it's just not fun living in that roller coaster life try to think about it as the play and we talked about this in previous podcasts of I'm doing this for what I'm going to look like in four years, what I'm, what my business is going to look like in 10 years, what my game's going to look like in, in six years. Okay. It's not fun. It's not easy to think that way. It's definitely not cool to have a conversation like, Hey dude, why are you in the cages today? Why? Well, let's go do something else. Well, cause I got to work, man. I got to go put in the reps. I got to go put in the time. And because I know that as I work through it, different things are going to pop up. I'm going to learn. I'm going to fail. I'm going to get better. I'm going to learn. I'm going to fail. I'm going to get better. And that it's just going to keep happening. But trust me when I say this, two years down the road, you're going to be a different guy. You're going to be a different dude. I see it all the time. All the time. 
those are the people that ultimately win. Those are the people that ultimately get to the places that they want to get to. Okay? So I hope that that has maybe hit home with some of you. I hope that this is a message that, well, I know it's applicable. I, I know it is in so many different areas of your life, so many different areas of your game, so many different areas of your coaching styles. And as, if you're a coach listening, I certainly hope that you can take this messaging and put it in to your team and make sure your team and your players understand why this is important, why this topic here is something that's going to really bring your team and your players some long-term success that they're, they're searching for. And players, if you're listening, put this into an example. Think about yourself. Think about how you handle the high highs and the low lows. Think about what your next thought is. Think about how am I going to react tomorrow? What's my goal tomorrow? What's my goal from a week from now, months from now, a year from now, 10 years from now? Think about that. Always be moving forward. It doesn't matter if you gain an inch or a mile, you're still gaining and keep gaining every day. I hope this topic kind of hit home for you guys. We do appreciate you listening to the closing pitch. Uh, like I said, my name is David Birkby, and this is a show about people, culture, and how to create a winning lifestyle. We really, really enjoy hearing from you guys uh, week in, week out. Please, if you do listen, obviously on our audio form, whatever podcast platform you use, please give us a five star review. It really helps us uh, find new listeners and get out there to more people that we can help with our information because ultimately, at the end of the day, that's why we do it. But uh, that's it for this episode, guys. Um, talk soon. See you.